What is up, heroes? This is Minite Zero, and welcome to week six of the CFL. This week, we're going up against Matt, coach of the last minute replacements, uh, which is really funny because uh, one of the original, I guess, participants in the league was actually, um, unfortunately, not able to participate. And so this person was called upon, and they are the last minute replacement for that previous coach. So I think it's pretty clever. And I also like that the they were able to come up with a really cool logo that reflects that. But anyways, um, their team is pretty interesting. They've changed it around quite a bit over the course of the season. Um, and they have quite a bit of a defensive backbone. One thing I'll talk about is that really there are two Pokemon that give my team a lot of trouble no matter how I build my team, and that's going to be a difficult time uh, during the match. I, from my, from what I've seen, I don't anticipate getting outplayed super intensely um, in this match, but I'm going to have to play very carefully to try to weaken a couple Pokemon in particular. He's got Ferrothorn, Slowbro, Seismitoad, and Mandibuzz, which form a really solid defensive core. Um, just great uh, coverage all around, immunities, etc. Ferrothorn, great on the bulk side, or bulk, or great in bulk, both on the defense um, and special defense side. Can set up hazards, you know, you know, Ferrothorn stuff. Um, Slowbro is a really good mon for teleport and regenerator, getting some momentum. Can also set up Trick Room, which is pretty neat. Can be a Calm Mind Sweeper. It's an absolute pain. Then there's Seismitoad, which is one of his Water Absorb Pokemon that he got specifically for Dracovish. Um, it can also set up Stealth Rock. Can it? Yeah, it can set up Stealth Rock. can run a more offensive set and actually do a surprising amount of damage with Life Orb. It's got decent move coverage. Weavile is a hard-hitting Pokemon. Definitely frail, though. Um, it's a great knockoff user. can have priority with Ice Shard. can set up with Swords Dance. Uh, great fighting coverage with Low Kick. It's a scary mod. It's got an excellent speed here at 125 as well. Mandibuzz is a really, really bulky Pokemon, thanks to its fat 110 HP set, in addition to great, like, mixed bulk in 105 defense and 95 spadef. It's a psychic immunity, it's a ground immunity, and it has reliable recovery and roost, it can get rid of hazards with defog, it can foul play toxic and get momentum with U-turn. This is one problem Pokemon for my team. The only thing on my team that can actually really hit this Pokemon hard is Heliolisk. And Heliolisk is not a very reliable damage output Pokemon. And I guess maybe Galarian Rapidash as well, but even then, that's even more frail than Heliolisk. So, Manabuzz is going to be a Pokemon I have a really tough time taking down. Alola Marowak is slow, but hits really hard. It has a base 80 attack, but when it's holding the Thick Club, it doubles its attack. So it hits really, really hard. Um, the other big thing is that Poltergeist came out, which is a Ghost-type physical move that is significantly stronger than Shadow Bone, which is what it previously had for Ghost Stab. So it can hit really hard with Flare Blitz, um, Poltergeist, Earthquake, or Bone Meringue. And yeah, it can... I think it can set up with Swords Dance too. Would make an excellent Trick Room Sweeper and is overall decently bulky-ish, especially on the physical side. So... Uh, a little bit difficult to take down. Then, Lycanroc Dusk. This is the other huge problem Pokemon for my team. Honestly, I mean, it's base 117 attack with Tough Claws, meaning all physical contact moves, uh, I guess that are claw-like or punch-like moves, get a, I think, 0.3, or is it 0.2? I'll have to look it up. Uh, bonus on damage. And... It has great coverage with Close Combat, Accelerock, a priority Rock-type move, um, Rock-type moves in like Stone Edge, uh, Ground-type moves with Drill Run, and Fighting-type with Close Combat. It's It hits really hard. It can set up Swords Dance, and it can also set up Stealth Rock if it wants. And I just don't have a defensive backbone that can handle this Pokemon. I think it also gets like Psychic Fangs and Crunch and Fire Fangs, so it's something that once it's in, I'm probably going to have to sack up on, unfortunately. Then there's Galvantula, which can set up webs and can hit pretty hard on the special attack side. It's only got base 97 special attack, but with really strong stab moves in Thunder and Bug Buzz and Compound Eyes to improve the accuracy of Thunder. It can hit really hard. Um, these things tend to run Life Orb or Specs or Sash to get up Sticky Webs. I don't know if we'll bring Sticky Webs. I don't think so, because my team is generally not very fast and the fast Pokemon are not really hindered that much by Sticky Webs. Um, but we'll see. And then there's Rotom Fan, which is a pretty neat uh, ground immunity, and 
It can set up with the nasty plot. It has some pretty cool support moves, like all the Rotom forms with like Will-O-Wisp. Um, it can hex as well, Volt Switch for momentum. It's still got a decent amount of bulk, although its typing isn't very good defensively. Venomoth is a scary setup sweeper, knowing that it has access to Sleep Powder and Quiver Dance. Its special attack is base 90, but it has Tinted Lens, meaning that normally, I guess, it eliminates resistances. <laughs> um, it doubles the amount of damage done on resisted hits, I believe. So it's really difficult to tank hits from this thing. So it's always a scary Pokemon to deal with. Um, I think we can do it. I think it also gets access to Roost, which is even scarier. So yeah, we're gonna have trouble with this thing. Um, Clefairy is like Clefable, but just not as good because it relies on a Violite and doesn't get leftovers. But it does all the same things. Can't wish as well, um, but it can teleport. Shedinja is a fun Pokemon I've enjoyed using in the past. Uh, it's just, it's silly. It, it likes having heavy duty boots around, which is really nice. Meaning it's not completely weak to hazards now. It has one HP, meaning anytime it gets hit by something, it dies. Or if it takes entry hazard damage, it dies. Uh, you can get around it if with um, Focus Sash, meaning it can take two hits, but otherwise, yeah, it's kind of there to make sure that your opponent, if you get rid of Pokemon that have super effective hits, oh, I should mention, yeah, Wonder Guard is an ability meaning it can only take damage from super effective hits. So if you eliminate the Pokemon in the opponent's team that, well, uh, that can hit it with super effective attacks, then you automatically win pretty much, or it comes down to PP stalling, which nobody likes, but that's his team. It's a pretty solid team now. I think the improvements he's made throughout the season via trades and transactions and stuff have really, really bolstered it. Uh, so it's been really difficult to prep for. But the Pokemon I settled on were the six you see here. Heliolisk was the first I decided on just because of its coverage against so many Pokemon on his team. Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Grass Knot, and Focus Blast. Uh, I don't like using Focus Blast at all, so I'm going to save it for at, like an absolutely necessary situation, I guess. Um, but it's really only there for Ferrothorn, in case I need to. Um, this thing cannot touch uh, Shedinja, unfortunately. It can hit a lot of his Pokemon really super effectively, though. And what I need to save this Pokemon for is Mandibuzz, because it's one of the few things on my team that can actually hit Mandibuzz hard. So that's really why it's there. Grass Knot is for Seismitoad if he wants to get cheeky. And that's kind of all there is to it. I'm really on the fence about the Focus Blast, because I don't know how frequently I'll ever actually use that. But it might be nice to have as a backup in case I absolutely need it to do damage to Ferrothorn. It's also nice to have a water immunity against something like Slowbro. Next up is Rillaboom, which is also going to be running Life Orb. It's Grassy Glide, Knock Off, Drain Punch, and Swords Dance. It's got a ton of bulk and no speed because I don't need to outspeed anything on his team, really. And Grassy Glide is a potential sweeping option just because of how much damage it does to so much on his team. The only things really stopping this Pokemon from sweeping are Mandibuzz and um, Venomoth. So those are things I need to be uh, wary of. Because even like plus two, Life Orb, uh, Grassy Glide, well, Oko, Galvantula, it'll do a ton of damage to almost everything on his team. And then Drain Punch is there for Ferrothorn, Knock Off for Alolan Marowak. Um, yeah, need to watch out for Ice Shard from Weavile. But we will see about that. Um, I have a decent amount of bulk, which helps a lot. Next up is Heavy Duty Boots Chandelure. Basically, I don't want to have to take rocks damage and stuff, but this thing destroys his defensive core, except for Mandibuzz. Um, just between Flamethrower, Shadow Ball, and Energy Ball, you can see I'm already hitting so much on his team super effectively. And this is one of my potential answers, checks. I guess, like, really soft check to Venomoth. Um, I have Toxic as my fourth slot move because Mandibuzz is an excellent switch into this Pokemon and I need that thing toxic and I need to be whittling away at it. So I need to, uh, that could be an opportunity I have later in the game um, that would help set up. Flash Fire is also really helpful just to make Marowak think twice about going for a fire type move, but that's kind of all there was to it. Then Ditto, typical choice scarf Ditto. Uh, this has really a couple applications. Namely, um, set up Venomoth is really scary, but at, if he Quiver Dances, I can basically beat it 1v1 because he won't 2 a KO me uh, before I'll 2 a KO him. And then the other thing is Lycanroc Dusk, if it sets up with a Swords Dance, I can bring it in and then proceed to do a ton of damage to his own team with it. So, 
you can see that if Ferrothorn is weakened, a plus two Lycanroc, even if it's choice locked into a rock type move, puts in a ton of damage on his entire team. So, yeah, that's pretty much why Ditto is there. It would be nice to know the sets of things, but there's not too much, I guess, surprise power in a lot of his Pokemon, at least um, from what I understand. And then we have Blissey, uh, Seismic Toss, Stealth Rock, Wish, and Teleport. The main idea behind this Blissey set is to get up rocks to whittle away at things, especially Alolan Marowak and Weavile, and I guess to keep Shedinja out. Uh, maybe Rotom Fan as well, but really, rocks are great for chipping away at everything, putting things in range of Grassy Glide, primarily. Seismic Toss is there to do consistent damage to just about everything. Uh, this Mon is here almost exclusively because of his strong special attackers, uh, Slowbro, Galvantula, Rotom Fan, and Venomoth. I believe I can beat Venomoth 1v1, um, because I can just go for Seismic Toss a couple times if he wants to put me to sleep and uh, Quiver Dance and stuff and boost up. I can just teleport out and then go into Ditto and then Reverse Sweep him, pretty much. So that's always an option. Uh, but yeah, Wish and Teleport are helpful for healing up my Pokemon too, if necessary. And then there's Fizz Def, Toxapex. Uh, nothing extraordinary here. Scald is the usual. It hits things hard. Um, no, it doesn't hit things hard, but it can burn things. That's that's how it hits hard. Um, whether that's Weavile or Slowbro or Ferrothorn, mostly Ferrothorn. I'd like to get a burn on that, but it can it can get off Scalds, uh, do some damage to Lycanroc Dusk as well. Knockoff is there to get rid of the heavy duty boots on Mandibuzz, which I'm sure will come in on it. Uh, same with potentially Seismito to get rid of that thing's leftovers, and then there's Toxic to Toxic everything that's not Ferrothorn, and decides to come in on it, and recover, because I need that reliable recovery. This Pokemon does get 2 it KO'd by Drill Run from a Life Orb Lycanroc Dusk, even with Max Fizz Def, so it's, um, it's not very reassuring, and this isn't a great check even to Lycanroc Dusk, which will be a bit of a pain. But between Knockoff and Toxic, I hope to just whittle away at most things. And yeah, that's the team. Like I said, Mandibuzz and Lycanroc Dusk will present the biggest problems to the team and might necessitate just sacrificing a Mon to be able to bring in Ditto or Rillaboom. Um, Rillaboom is definitely going to be the key to winning this game. If I chip away at things, plus two Rillaboom um, can two a KO Mandibuzz, can two a KO Ferrothorn, etc. Um, I just need to watch out for uh, Accelerock from Lycanroc Dusk and Ice Shard from Weavile. But that's the team. And I hope you guys are looking forward to the match. Uh, this is kind of important because if we win this match, we clinch first play or first place um, playoff seed, which would be really nice to know going into the final game. But yeah, until the match, Zoom Night Zero, and this mission is complete. <laughs>